Welcome to Talk of the Nation. I'm JT as the Silver and Black are in Kansas City to take on the world champion Chiefs. We kick off the show with Charles Davis, who's on the call for CBS. And Charles, first, congratulations on everything that's happening with your career. And let's jump right in with your evaluation of the Raiders through four games. Thanks a lot, JT. It's great to be talking with you again. This is a lot of fun always. And, uh, you know, my evaluation of the Raiders is they've played like two and two. And I think that they're a little bit better than that. They believe they're better than that. The schedule has done them no favors. It, you know, they in the Houston Texans, they, they could easily get together, right, and say, okay, <laughs> how was your schedule? Yeah, you ought to see mine. So, so right out of the gate, that wasn't easy. But beating New Orleans in, in the first game in Allegiant and opening up the Death Star like that was, was tremendous. I just didn't think they played as well in the last couple of ball games because Buffalo, that was a 17-16 game in the third quarter. You know, they're right there. They're hanging tough. So got to make more plays. It's well documented. You know, Coach Gruden has said it, and I, I tend to agree with him based on what I've seen on tape. They've got to find a way to start taking the ball away on defense. And, and I'll stop here, JT. But what I've seen so far in this early season, last week I had the Chargers. Their prevailing theme, we don't take the ball enough away on defense. I mean, it is not, you know, they're not alone. Oh, yeah, by the way, when we had Houston, when they were heading into week three against Pittsburgh, they had zero takeaways at that point. I believe they still have zero takeaways. You're not going to win any games in the NFL if you don't get the ball from the other people. Let's talk Derek Carr. Eight touchdowns, no interceptions, a high completion percentage. We've seen that before, but now he's going up against Mahomes. Let's talk about what you've seen with Carr and where his ceiling is this year. I feel like he gets a bum rap a lot of the time, JT. When, when you have these kind of numbers and you are taking care of the football, you're giving your team opportunities to make plays, to win ball games, to do a lot of good things. His downside has been in the pocket and the ball getting knocked out. You know, I mean, it hasn't been when the ball's been in the air. Somewhere Woody Hayes is, is thinking to himself, that's not how I, how I meant it when I said, you know, putting the ball in the air, two out of three things will, will be bad. For Derek Carr, he's handling it well. He's, he's moving it around to a plethora of people, even though he hasn't had all of his, his weapons, you know, each and every game. But in the pocket, key times that ball's been knocked out, that's been characteristic of his career. That's got to be taken care of. But if he gets Henry Ruggs back for this game, a chance to loosen things up downfield, make a few more plays, I think, you know, I, I like where he's headed. I like where this team is headed. And frankly, JT, Josh Jacobs, they've got to start springing him loose, give him a better opportunity. He's getting smothered in the backfield on handoffs way too often. John Gruden and Mike Mayock, no guess better to talk about both of them than you. You know both. You have long relationships. Let's start with Mike Mayock and NFL Network and your years there. Why is Mike a perfect pairing for John Gruden? JT is a perfect pairing because they speak the same language and they were able to speak at day one. You know, let, let's, let's call it like dating, okay? Whether we're married, whether we're in long-term relationships, whether we are just meeting people for the first time, that dance of the first date is very interesting, isn't it? Because you're trying to figure out each other. You're trying to see what, what language you speak. What are your beliefs? What are you strong on? What do you, you know, all those things. Those two... If from the day they met, from the time they started talking, it was like they'd been in a 30 year relationship. Now, when people, when I say that, people always say, oh boy, well, you know, they're just gonna echo each other and finish each other. Say, no, what I mean is these guys have such a passion for football. See, see how they believe the game should be played through a similar lens. A lot of similarities, yet plenty of differences and not afraid to express those differences to each other in order to come to a consensus. I've joked before, JT, look, if you would sell me the tickets to a couple of their steel cage matches when they were discussing talent and, and evaluations, we'd make a lot of money. But when they walk out of the cage, they're going to walk out of the cage arm in arm with a consensus and a united front. And that's why I believe this is a very, going to be a very successful relationship for the long term. Charles, beside COVID, what is your biggest storyline so far for this season? I think we started with continuity, JT, those teams who had coaches, stars, core of teams in place. And we saw that play out pretty early, Kansas City, Baltimore, people like that. I think adjustment, a word we use all the time in the NFL is coming into play now because the injuries have kicked in. You know, people want to discuss the injuries. People don't want to discuss injuries. We've had them, you know, and we've had some pretty significant ones. Who's making the adjustment? Who is coming along and, and finding their way through? It's a weird year, as we well know, when Philadelphia is 1-2-1 and one in leading their division. 
Okay, so we already know that that's strange. It's a weird year when Ron Rivera takes over Washington, has a second year quarterback who's a first round pick, and he's already benched as we go into week five without knowing anything because maybe because Ron Rivera looks at that division and says, one, two, and one, we might actually be able to compete this year as opposed to just, just be a team, you know? And last but not least, it's a weird year when you look up and you say to yourself, okay, the teams that are sprinting ahead, can we go ahead and pencil them in? Or are we waiting for the other shoe to drop? Because a team like San Francisco, loaded, beset by injuries. They thought they had a good backup quarterback in Mullins. He didn't play that well. You see where they're going? All of a sudden, they've dropped some games that you didn't expect them to lose, especially the one to Philadelphia at home on Sunday night. So I I'm eager to watch the rest of this unfold. Charles is one of the best broadcasters in all of sports. We thank him. And coming up next, the mayor of Flavortown, Guy Fieri, as we continue on Talk of the Nation. This has been brought to you by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. By Cox Business. Proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. By San Manuel Casino, official Southern California casino of Allegiant Stadium. Welcome back to Talk of the Nation. One of the great Raider fans from all around the world joins us, my friend Guy Fietti. Guy, thanks so much for doing this. We miss you and your son cooking for all of us up in Napa this year. I'm, I'm telling you, you're missing it. I'm missing it. Everybody's missing it. But uh, I'm glad that you're down there in Vegas taking care of business and keeping everybody informed. You know Vegas as good as anyone. Let's talk about how the Raiders have transformed Vegas as a sports town. Well, I went to school at UNLV uh, in the 90s uh, when we won the NCAA. So I'm a running rebel. My son, Hunter, uh, just graduated in December. He's a running rebel. And uh, so I know Vegas for sports. And, of course, everybody knows Vegas for sports, going there for the big games and all that. But I tell you what, I've been saying forever, we need a major team uh, in Vegas. And Vegas is an enormous city with a lot of fans and a lot of great people, a lot of families. And uh, I haven't been to the stadium yet. We have a restaurant that we're dying to open in there that's there. But uh, I, I think it's a great home. You travel Sadly all left. over the world. Sadly How do you describe Raider home. Nation? You know these fans as good as anyone. And I'm sorry, JT, we broke up. But I was just, uh, you know what? It's, 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 the, the stadium's awesome. The support from the state, the support from Vegas, all those pieces. I mean, I hate that we left Oakland. I really do, just like everybody does. But they deserve a great stadium, and, and they deserve a great place to play. And I think uh, if we had to go anywhere, Vegas was my – Big time second choice. Well, you know these fans as good as anyone. Describe Raider Nation when you travel around the world and you bump into these fans. <laughs> well, I'm going to say it the way I really think it. Notorious. I think that in a good in a good and crazy way. Um, that's all you have to say, you know. And and I make you know all my buddies. If I have fans from all over the place, but all you have to say when they go, "Where are you from?" I go, "I'm from Northern California." Oh, really? Who's your team? And what they're doing is set it up. Are you a nine or a Raider? Uh, and I just go, I'm silver and black. I'm a Raider. And, you know, and you'll just watch people. They don't say anything. They just go, oh, oh. And then I'm like, because they want to be Raiders. You know, every team wants to have the, the Raider reputation and the lineage and the history and the and the mystique. And uh, But it's, it's, it's great. I love being a Raider. What do you think of this team? You know this team well. You know a lot of the players, two and two. The Raider Nation is demanding more and a tough task going into Kansas City. Well, I'll tell you, Kansas City is on fire. I'll give that. Uh, I mean, just the passing attack. Running attack, maybe not so much, but the passing attack. And, of course, we need that. You know, we need to hold up with that in, in, in our defense. But, um Look good. I mean, there's a lot of things we're doing right. I mean, look at Carr, eight touchdowns, uh, you know, no interceptions. Uh, I mean, 73% pass rating. I mean, there's all kinds of things there. We've got all the right pieces. I, of course, you know, I think coach is the greatest thing going. Um, yeah, just a little, a little more tuning, a little more tightening, not hope nobody gets hurt. I mean, it's we're there. I, I've just been saying we're in these years. We're in this development. But, boy, I tell you something, that win, that first game at home, come on. <laughs> Now, the Raiders are in Kansas City. You are an expert on this. Best barbecue spot in Kansas City. 
You trying to get me fired? <laughs> no, I'm trying just asking you. You can go. I go stay in the best barbecue joint in Kansas City. You got to go. With next time you're in Kansas City, you got to go check out a joint called uh, Smoking Guns. There, uh, there's so many, bud. I mean, I can't sit there and run it down for you. But I will tell you, and I <laughs> this got me in some hot water. But I did call. I did call Coach. I called Gruden and said, "Hey, I'm in. The, we're in the off season. Andy Reid's a big Triple D fan. He's got some Triple D joints he wants to go to. Is it okay?" And I go, like, "Ah, Coach is the best. He's a great guy." So, so we went there, and Andy showed me some of his favorite places. Uh, Kansas City is a center for great barbecue, not just barbecue, but great food. Awesome, my friend. I miss you. We miss you here in Vegas. I know you're doing a great job at the ranch. You're feeding firefighters. You care about a lot of people. We can't wait to see you in Vegas and do this again because your heart and soul, Raider Nation, and Vegas and you and this team come together perfectly. Commitment to excellence, baby. Keep it up. Thank you, God. Appreciate it. Coming up next, Brian Baldinger joins us from NFL Network as we continue on Talk of the Nation. This has been brought to you by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. Welcome back to Talk of the Nation. Brian Baldinger joins us from NFL Network. And Baldy, you were just out here. Before you assess the Raiders, tell us about your experience at Allegiant Stadium. Well, I got a, a tour, JT, on Saturday afternoon for about two hours. So, you know, just the, the people working on, you know, putting the, the Raiders logo on the field were about the only people in the building. It was, it, was, it was nothing short of spectacular. I mean, the stadium is unbelievable. I've been to SoFi, and that is just a sprawling campus. But everything from the moment you see Allegiant Stadium on the outside, walk around and see it at night, see it in the daytime, to the time you walk through the door, they honor the Raiders, their history, uh, the great owner, Al Davis. Um, it's, it's, it's really a marvel. I mean, it, it's as nice as it could possibly get. There's not a bad seat in the house. Um, I can't wait until they're allowed fans in there because they're going to raise the roof in that place. It's, it's spectacular. Let's talk about the team two and two through the first quarter of the season. What do you think when you saw them live? Well, I mean, they, they were highly competitive. Uh, JT through three quarters, and then the turnovers hit. You know, Waller gets the ball knocked out of his hands. I mean, they, they commit the two fourth-quarter turnovers, and Buffalo, as good teams do, they capitalize. Um, the Raiders can't seem to get a takeaway. You know, they haven't, they haven't caused any fumbles. They only have two interceptions all year. Um, and that was the difference in the game. I mean, uh, they, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a really good football team, and they did a lot of good things. They had a couple of critical penalties that really hurt them. You know, a touchdown to Nelson Aguilar got called back because of an illegal formation that shouldn't happen. So that's on the Raiders. But, you know, when they're not beating themselves, they're a good football team, you know. But right now they're 2-2 two and two because, look, in the when that game was in the balance, they didn't make the plays the way that the Buffalo Bills did. You've been giving a lot of hype to Max Crosby, Condor, and also Jonathan Abram. Let's talk about those two young players. Well, I like both of them. I mean – you know, right now the Raiders are really searching for a pass rush. Uh, you know, Max has gotten three sacks in the last two games. I mean, he's come alive. Uh, he's given a little bit, but they need more. They need more from it. And so, but I think Max is, is, is going to be a double-digit sack guy. As long as he's healthy, he's going to be double-digit because of his effort and his, you know, the wingspan of a condor. I mean, he just uses those arms to, to his real advantage, and he plays really hard. Uh, and Jonathan Abram just brings a lot of intensity. You know, the play that he made against the quarterback, Josh Allen, out there on the, uh, on the edge where he just jumped right over the block and was able to blow up the play, or blow, jumped over Jonathan Allen, Josh Allen and then blew up the play. I mean, those kind of plays are just classic Jonathan Abram. Um, he plays the game full speed, probably has to learn how to protect himself just a little bit, but I don't want to be the person that has to say that to him. I've been talking to you about the offensive line for a while. On paper, when they're completely healthy, they're one of the best offensive lines in football, but depth has been brought into play. Assess the offensive line for us. Well, it's been a mixed match unit. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, there's, there's no substitute for Trent Brown. You know, but then when you lose Sam Young, you got to play, you know, uh, you know, good at right tackle or right guard or left guard or wherever he's needed. 
Um, they just haven't stayed real healthy. Now, the good thing is that, you know, Colt Miller has played well. You know, I think he's played the best football that he's played through the first quarter of this season in his career. So that's a good thing. But they, you know, they, they're down to their depth right now. I mean, they're using and have played, you know, eight different guys right now. Uh, I don't know when Trent Brown comes back from that calf injury. Um, but certainly he makes a difference, especially in the run game. Just his smalling style, JT. Uh, you're just going to get a lot more movement than you are with anybody else right now. But, you know, when they're all healthy and look, Incognito is not going to be out there. So that's not really going to help it. But Denzel Good has been good. So, you know, no pun intended. He's played well. So the tight ends have blocked pretty good. But you got to go with what you have. I mean, that's just a, that's just a business right now uh, across the board. Let's stay with that with Tom Cable. And he was a former head coach now on this offensive line. Someone John Gruden can really count on on game day to get this team fired up and make sure they're lined up correctly. Yeah, look, I mean, Tommy is a, he's a, good, he's a good coach. He learned under Alex Gibbs. Um, I played for Alex Gibbs. I mean, he's really the, really the architect of the whole zone stretch run game and how, how mechanically perfect you have to be to make that go. And that's really the foundation to what their offense is. I mean, they run a lot of power plays too because of the, of the way their offense line is constructed, but they like that zone stretch the way San Francisco does, the Rams do. And, and Tommy can coach that play up and you're gonna get a lot of good play action off of that, get the ball down the field. Uh, you know, it'd be good to get uh, Henry Ruggs out there and to get Brian Edwards out there. Two guys I think that can really make a difference in a passing game. You're gonna need help in the running game to set that all up, to get those guys down the field. And so I'm a big believer in what Tom Cable has done. I've seen him coach with Alex Gibbs in Atlanta, uh, in Denver. Uh, he knows what he's doing. And he knows how to really coach a good group up. He did last year. And I expect whoever's out there is going to be coached up well. Well, do you never wore the silver and black, but you have so much respect for Al Davis and Mark Davis and how they treat the alumni. That's a big deal around here. Can you talk about it? Because you know so many of the Raider legendary alumni. No question about it. It's not like that everywhere, JT. When you go outside the Allegiant Stadium right now, they've got a brick. For <laughs> I hope they have one for you, JT, too. But they have a brick out there for every player that's ever put the Raider uniform on. Um, you know, every Hall of Famer that has ever played for the Raiders or another team, uh, but played for the Raiders, get honored on their Hall of Fame wall. Um, it's a tribute. I mean, they, it's literally brick by brick, every single player. Uh, whether it was one game, one year, or a Tim Brown type career, uh, they're getting honored uh, by the by the Raider organization, and I just think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic because they're where they're at right now with this stadium and and really this fan following because of the players that came before, and all they're trying to do is let those people know that they're important. Look at this. Two guys from Massapequa, Long Island, having a conversation on TV. I got to ask you, who's the most famous alumni from your high school in Massapequa? I guess the easy answer is Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, if you just go by the bank account, it's probably Jerry Seinfeld. We like to think that the Baldinger brothers, JT, will give them a run for their money. Three boys, the first three brothers ever to all play in the NFL at the same time together. We're pretty proud of that. But the Baldwins, they've got four of their boys, so they could give us a run for their money. Uh, it goes pretty deep. It goes pretty deep there uh, when you start talking about that particular community, JT. We're pretty, pretty proud of the alumni that's come through there. Constellation, brought to you by Modelo, setting the gold standard for authentic Mexican beer since 1925. Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. back to Talk of the Nation. This past Thursday marked the nine-year anniversary of the passing of the great Al Davis and team president Mark Bedane went outside this facility and lit the torch in memory of his name. Now, you know there's the big torch inside Allegiant Stadium, but there's also one here in Henderson outside the facility. And this team headquarters is fabulous and it's going to make a difference 
with the silver and black going forward. Now they have their own facility, the best training facility in the world, especially in the NFL. So free agents and players will want to come to the silver and black, and the Raiders will have everything they need to become a championship contender again. Speaking of championship contenders, Kansas City is up next, and this is the best team in all of football. The Super Bowl champs, and this rivalry goes back to the AFL, and it means everything to everyone in this building, including the staff and the players. So the Raiders are going to have to play their best game. They're going to have to play an outstanding game from the beginning right through the fourth quarter, and they can do that. They've prepared. They're getting players back healthy. But this is a test of the organization and the team. If you want to win long term, the division goes through Kansas City and quite possibly championships in the future. And the Raiders have John Gruden, and John Gruden knows this. Coach Gruden understands everything about Andy Reid and the Chiefs organization, and he'll have this team ready to go. And now the players have to step up. They have to step up to this challenge because it's the ultimate challenge in all of football. Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City as they're undefeated. After this game, the Raiders are on the bye week, so we'll see you in a couple of weeks. For everyone at Silver and Black Productions, I'm JT. Go Raiders. This has been brought to you by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Las Vegas Raiders. By Credit One Bank, the official card of the Raiders. By Cox Business, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders.